Hi there, and let's get to it. Today we're looking at transitions. They can be found in the effects library of the edit page. At the top, the panel is broken up into the toolbox, the open effects, and audio effects. I've previously touched on the fact that DaVinci Resolve supports third-party transitions and wipes, which you can download and which will appear inside of the open effects subsection of the library. In these tutorials, we're going to be focusing on the standard presets offered inside of the toolbox. So that will be the transitions and later on titles and generators. And as you can see, there's quite a few transition options. With all the film standards, including crossfade, cross dissolve, and dip to color represented. Adding a transition is as simple as click and dragging it on top of the timeline. If I zoom in a little bit, you'll see that there is now an outline indicating where the transition begins and ends. I'm going to delete this and show you that there are three locations where a transition could end up before, in the middle, or after a cut point. If this is not appearing for you, then it's possible that you don't have enough media after or before the cut point of the two surrounding clips. So let me show you what I mean. If I zoom out and zoom back in on a different area of the timeline, I can show you with my trim tools that both these edges are red, so there are no more video frames on either side. If I try to drop a transition here, it simply won't happen. So to fix this, I will have to use the trim tool just to clear up a little bit of space on both ends. And as you can see by the graphic representation, I've now dragged a bit of that footage past the cut point, And I now have footage to transition into. So with a one second long transition, you'll need 12 frames on either side of the cut point in order to achieve this. You can also select an edit point and use the shortcut Control T to insert a transition. You can make changes to transitions by clicking and dragging their edges or by clicking on the inspector panel and with the transition selected, you'll be able to see all the criteria that you can change. This is very useful because I can't tell just by looking at this if it's two seconds long or not. But inside of the inspector, I'm able to put in numeric values and specify exactly how long I want the transition to be. I could also choose to align either at the beginning, the center or the end. And at the bottom, I can still change my transition style, which reflects all of the styles available inside of the toolbox itself. When you select your transition type, you'll see further controls appear underneath based on the type of transition you're using. Most of these transitions have very unique settings and they're quite easy to figure out, so I won't spend too much time on them. But I'd like to point out a few things that might be of particular interest to you. So inside of the cross dissolve, you're able to select your dissolve style and Video and film refers to the natural way in which magnetic tape and analog film blends into each other. So video cross dissolves tend to look pretty flat and you get an equal opacity switch from one clip to the other. With a film dissolve, the areas of the footage that are darker are going to become transparent faster, just like it would with film because black areas were transparent areas. You can see a very mild shift when I switch between video and film. I find that a lot of editors and filmmakers prefer the film cross-dissolve for stylistic purposes. It tends to look more cinematic. If there are certain dissolves you find yourself using all the time, you can indicate them as favorites by clicking on the little star symbol to the right. And in future edits, you could decide to only show your favorite transitions to tidy up your workspace and not spend too much time going through the options. When I use the shortcut Control t I can select this transition and determine that it's a cross dissolve, but I might prefer for dip to color to be my standard. In that case, I can just right click and say set a standard transition. From now on, every time I use the shortcut, the dip to color transition will be applied to the clip. Lastly, there is a way to quickly control the opacity of your clips without even resorting to the toolbox or to any of the effects. And that is by looking at the little handles in the top left and right corners of all your clips. So if I was to grab one of these handles and pull it to the side, I'll now reveal a transition within the clip itself. Thank you for watching and until next time.